the curvy shopper has to e-shop so much. The unfortunate footprint, the carbon footprint that that applies to. But if stores would just put us in their store, I would go to the store. Hello. Thank you so much for checking out Earth Care, the interview series that's dedicated to understanding the ways we can care for the Earth and each other. I'm your host, Sarah Christie, and I'm on a mission to make climate change an approachable and not so overwhelming conversation for everyone. On this podcast, we meet climate heroes, activists, experts, entrepreneurs, and get their take on how we can help save the planet. And during this episode, we're learning how to do that through inclusive and accessible fashion. Carly Roberts has a very full founder's hat. She's the founder of Consign Your Curves, Canada's largest size-inclusive consignment shop that's located in Guelph, Ontario, the founder of Pearl Shop, and Guelph Strong. Carly has married inclusivity, affordability, and sustainability in the fashion game and is an absolute trailblazer for curvy women's closets. Now, one of the very first interviews done on Earth Care was actually about sustainable fashion. You know, what deems something sustainable versus not sustainable. That conversation was so educational, but it's important to note that was one of my first deep dives into learning about the fashion space, specifically the sustainable fashion space. So initially, I was fired up. You know, I'm only buying secondhand or sustainable if that's an option, and that's that. However, through continued learning, I became very aware that being able to make that choice is a privilege. To say that the fashion space hasn't historically been inclusive for curvy shoppers is an understatement. And that's across the board, you know, fast fashion, secondhand or sustainable. Of course, positive change has been put in motion, but as we'll hear from Carly, there's still a lot of room for welcomed and overdue adjustments. When we finished recording, Carly mentioned that a lot of the clothes that come through her store still have brand new tags on them. She explained that oftentimes, if a curvy shopper finds an item that they like, and it fits right, they'll buy a few, maybe one in every color. However, when they get home, perhaps they realize that the material isn't really what they were hoping for or some of the colors don't work for them. So then they're either stuck with all these clothes that they aren't wearing or they have to find a business that will actually accept them. Now, if that isn't a scenario that you can relate to, that's a privilege. Fashion is part of our lives, and fashion that we feel good in can truly make all the difference. But this word that comes up so often in the climate space is sustainable, right? But when we talk about sustainability, that has to mean for everyone. There needs to be a seat at the table for everyone. Not only does fashion impact everyone, so does climate change. So as we learn more about taking positive strides toward mitigating climate risk, how can we make sure that everyone or everybody is included in that conversation. That's what Carly has built through her Consign Your Curves community. As she mentions on her website, Consign Your Curves has so far added to closets for over 2,000 women. She's empowering the curvy shopper with a sustainable approach, and I'm just so excited that she shared her time with Earth Care to talk the backstory of Consign Your Curves, the importance of inclusive sizing, and why she encourages competition. Here it is, my Earth Care conversation with Carly Roberts. Carly, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being on Earth Care. I'm great. Thank you for so much for having me, Sarah. I'm very interested to see what we're going to delve into tonight. Well, you know, I'm always so excited to talk about fashion on Earth Care because it really is such a layered conversation, right? Like fashion plays such a major role in all of our lives but with the way that we consume now it unfortunately also plays a major role in the climate crisis so there's so much continued learning to do with respect to sustainability consumption inclusivity and the way that you've integrated all of those layered into your business is just so empowering so i'm wondering if we can just start with a bit of a backstory behind consign your curves 100%. So back in the day, air quotes, I was a blogger, uh, which if if your audience skews very young, they have no no concept of what a Blackberry and a blog was back in the day. So I had started Friends in My Closet because friends were always coming to me and borrowing shoes or accessories. I was just kind of that friend. And then eventually you accumulate more things nowhere near the extent of what a fashion influencer accumulates now, but I was accumulating items. And so especially in the curve market, you're paying for almost all of that stuff out of pocket. Um, And at that time it was even worse. And so I accumulated a lot of goods and I was, no consignment store would take my items because they were over a size 12. There was no air quotes market for it. And so I turned to other women I was blogging with at the time, other girls I had modeled with. And I thought, if I have this problem, maybe you do too. 
and they 100% had that problem or hadn't even considered the idea of consignment because as a plus size person, you never walk into anywhere really and assume that they're going to have things for you. We assume that we will never have options. And we started the first consignors curve sale in 2013, 2013. Yeah, that's how we say that. And it took off like wildfire. Digress six years later, we were able to open up a storefront reluctantly on my behalf. I will be 100% honest. And the ball has been rolling ever since. We just started our fifth fiscal year and I'm still shocked and amazed at how well it's going, but I am still the lone wolf in this category and I always welcome more competition. Now, this is gonna be sound like a silly question because consignment is different from thrifting, not necessarily buying new, it's kind of sitting in the middle. Can you just talk about what consignment means? Yeah, so consignment means that a store is purchasing your clothes off you for a certain amount and giving you cash value. A lot of the franchise places will do that. Another element of consignment is that we'll take in your clothes, act as the agent for your clothes and give you a percentage of what those clothes are sold at. Um, so that's how COIC works. We work on the agent role. We don't do a full cash out. Whereas like thrifting, which people are typically used to is all based off donations. So you drop them off in the bins or you drop them off at the store or perhaps um, thrift stores like you will um, see in various places can buy bulk clothing by the pound from waste management facilities to then resell, repurpose, upcycle or whatever their business model is. Now you touched on it a little bit earlier as you were introducing consign your curves with no one would buy your clothes. And I think the, one of the big problems that we run into when we, when you start learning about something and go, oh, that works. Why isn't everyone doing that? You know? And so you learn about sustainable fashion and go, well, why isn't every influencer supporting these brands? And I'm wondering if you can speak to, you know, the relationship between the fashion industry and accessibility and the work they have to do with inclusivity. I will start off with sustainability and inclusivity typically do not align. More companies are becoming sustainable or they're preaching their sustainability efforts without becoming size inclusive. Right. Um, somehow the one is more fashionably um, sold than being inclusive. So I think that when it comes to being inclusive, it's tough. You mentioned a few of the hats I've worn. Developing a line of clothing that spans more sizes is hard to do. And I was told once by a woman who owns a boutique, when I asked her why owns a sustainable boutique, why, you know, you're not doing more. There's a market. People would like to spend their dollars. And she said, it's the path of least resistance. But doing a few sizes is a lot easier than doing a lot of sizes. And I think that that is the problem with the inclusivity factor that a lot of businesses are choosing not to jump on. It's hard. And people don't like to do hard things, especially when there are millions and millions of dollars at stake. No matter how much a curve customer stands at the door waving, you know, a fan full of cash going, let me spend my money. They're like, it's a little too hard to get it right. And I think that's the problem with the inclusivity factor. I think we're seeing a lot of clothing brands turn or try to turn the leaf on sustainability, but it is also a process. There are these manufacturing facilities, there are codes, there are the path of least resistance is probably the best way to describe why things move so slow or change is slow. Right. Absolutely. There's work to be done. That is why it's so beautiful what you've been able to create. And even, you know, you're in Guelph, but the online community that you've been able to create. And it's just, I love to see social media used in such a positive way. And I think that's what you get immediately from visiting consign your curves even online right so 2023 marks the 10th anniversary and i'm wondering as an entrepreneur that has all of these projects under your belt what are can you speak to some of the hurdles that you've overcome in these past 10 years that you went wow i i wasn't expecting that well we can start with COVID. yes I wasn't expecting right. a global pandemic number one um that's probably everybody's answer i feel like um this august four years in, I just started to get my sea legs as an entrepreneur, because I think the first year, year and a half, you're opening up a business, you're going in blind. You know, CYC had built a brand for six years before we opened the door. So I knew there was people and I knew there was a demand, but would they open up the door and come shopping? And so I think when you start a business, you can make the best product, you can create the best environment, but people still have to show up. So I think the first year and a half of that naturally was like, okay, 
I've built it. I've, I've Kevin Costner it. I've built it. Will they come? Right. Then we hit this global pandemic, which everyone can speak to on their own record was like so different for everybody. The greatest expression I heard is we're all in different boats. We're just weathering the same storm. And I think entrepreneurs had similar boats than maybe perhaps some of your friends, right? They were in a completely different boat. Some were sipping Mai Tais. I like to say I was Rose on the door struggling. <laughs> um, and now that that is subsiding, let's say, it has been easy to take a breath and to just breathe. And I think that has been the nicest thing is to now sit back and go, okay, how do we grow? How do we no longer just survive? How do we thrive? And that is the newest thing that I'm struggling with, generally speaking, because it's been so hard. So it's like, as much pre-pandemic, I said, oh, I would love to have a store in every province. And now I'm like, kind of good with one. <laughs> you know, the stress of having 11 stores in three territories seems daunting and a lot of money. And so I think uh, I'm a little gun shy on the growth right now because stability just feels really good on. That's how I think about it. Yeah, what I've heard this from an entrepreneur before the 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 freedom of, you know, you will do everything you can to quit that 40 hour work week, even if that means working 100 hours to be your own boss. And um, it, it seems like, you know, there's so much behind the scenes that we don't see of entrepreneurs like yourself and the TLC that you're putting into it. You know, you mentioned something earlier about welcoming competition. So what would your advice be to dip their toes into this space? Well, I like to say that if someone asks me for entrepreneurial advice, the first thing I always say is don't do this. <laughs> I know that sounds strange because uh, I think it's a lot of work. And I definitely went in with a bit of blinders on. And if you are not willing to blood, sweat and tears it, don't do it. And you'll go, oh, I can. I'm like, you have no idea when that switch flips, how your world's you know, changes in this untangible way. So the first thing is I will say, never be your own boss. <laughs> <laughs> Working for the man nine to five. Security is an amazing situation. However, I say that in the last 10 years, I'm still the lone wolf. I am still the only store in Canada that does the full gamut of plus. So size 12 to 32 plus. There are some beautiful stores across Canada that stop at a 22, stop at a 24, start at a 16. So for all of those business owners, I congratulate them. But I would like to see more because there are curves in all the area codes. Um, there is more than enough business and options. Plus size consumers do not have options, generally speaking. So if Sally can sign at my store, but Trish can sign at the other store, that's more options. Because maybe Trish didn't know about my store and doesn't consign here. So when I encourage competition it's just for more variety which the curve shopper does not have obviously in consignment but in retail I mean the tangible brick and mortar store does not ex really truly exist like it does for a straight size person and for that the variety is why I welcome the competition Absolutely. And I think this leads directly perfectly into my next question, because I really am so grateful for this conversation because, you know, consignment is such a sustainable alternative to buying new and uh, the climate crisis affects everyone. So we all need to be able to have a seat at the table and participate. And there's so much learning to do with fashion and so much work to be done with fashion to make sure that there is a seat at the table for everyone. So as a consumer, how can we hold brands accountable and make sure that they're not only providing inclusive sizing, but also fair pricing? Because that's not always the case either. Sarah, this is such a, a tough question to really honestly answer. I think the answer I would like to give you, which is the one I would assume that you're going to hear. But I think what makes it tough for a curve customer to really play into the sustainability. We can't boycott a brand because I still need to get dressed because there's not enough stores for me. So as much as I, I want to say, do not put your money into a fast fashion brand, I also need to still get dressed. And unfortunately, when you don't have a lot of options, always buying, which is more typically expensive, the sustainable option isn't financially viable for a lot of people in the curve market. So I think it's hard for a curve person to hold the feet to the fire of the sustainability conversation as a whole, because we still haven't been able to get dressed the same way a straight person 
Jackson has to be able to have that buying and that um, that power with our dollars, because our dollars are telling you we want bigger sizes, we want more sizes, and it's not working. So I'm not sure the curve customer boycotting a fast fashion brand is going to make them do anything different for a sustainability factor. Right. Just tough. That's not the answer we want to hear, but because I, and I truly don't, I wish it was different, but they don't, retailers don't consider the curve dollars at the same uh, value. They can hold straight that dollars at that, which is unfortunate. Right. Have you seen any positive change in your 10 years in the fashion space? And, and what change do you still want to see moving forward? I'm like amazed at the amount of small sustainable brands that there are available for plus. I think I always preach in the store, the next generation always has it better than the one that came before. So the 55 year old woman that comes into the store, I now have way more access to fashion than she did. And now the 17 year old that comes into my store has way more access to different brands and fashion than I did. So I, I think we've, when we're looking at these the internet has provided these small businesses that are doing amazing things of sustainability. We now have access to, which is great. And I think that's the big change of, you know, BlackBerry to Insta to iPhone 14, <laughs> just the evolution of technology alone has allowed people to put their money and their dollars into these brands that perhaps we never would have known about because they were on the West coast of Canada and I didn't know about them. Right. So I think we've definitely seen more options available then that also on the other coin means that we are buying from, you know, more fast fashion brands and, you know, the curvy shopper has to e-shop so much. The, the unfortunate footprint, the carbon footprint that that applies to, but if stores would just put us in their store, I would go to the store, you know, it's a tough right. thing. Now, it's a cat 22. Of course. Right. And that's, like I said, like, this is so layered and, and that is why I'm truly so grateful for this conversation because there are so many layers to pull back and, and learn about. Now you're in Guelph. We talked about that. You are online. How can people find you and connect with you and, and see what Consign Your Curves is all about? So you had touched on it earlier that the portray of my retail consignment store is so much more than a store. And we really are, we are a community. And I think that's based also off the years of the sales previous people got to interact and they got to shop and they got to be amongst hundreds of women in one day that no matter where the curve on their body was, they all had experienced the same thing. So consign your curves was built on the sense of community and access to clothing. So as we continue to grow our e-commerce, which is at consignyourcurves.com, and I always ask people to participate in our Instagram, which is at consignyourcurves, to join in the conversation. And I think that natural change happens, whether it's in sustainability or inclusivity, when there's a curve at the table, which is why I try for so much advocacy work to promote the consignment business and encourage other brands, but also other store owners and entrepreneurs to carry more sizes. And yes, it's tough, like I talked on earlier, but we need to do better as a community to benefit this planet because it's going to be gone if we don't do well. And so I'm constantly through my advocacy trying to say it's tough, but please do it because the customer is there. Carly Roberts, thank you so much for being on Earth Care. I so appreciate you sharing your time and, and your knowledge. And this was it was just so great to finally meet you. Anytime, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to Earth Care and letting this podcast be a part of your day. Since you made it this far, here's a little sneak peek into the conversation we're having next week. I hope that we like get people out of jobs that are exploitative and not healthy and not good for the earth and not good for them and move everybody towards taking action that's actually like fun and exciting and brings abundance so that everybody has food and everyone has shelter and everyone has clean water because that's you know the earth that we live on provides all these things until then don't forget to hit follow or subscribe whatever that button is on the device that you're listening to this episode on then you'll know when new episodes are out and hey if you have time leave a review message me with a review i would love to know what's on your mind what's been clicking with you and what topics you'd like to learn more about those are also a really big help when it comes to gathering more interviews so i truly do appreciate that we can also connect online at Earth Care Show on Instagram and TikTok and earthcareshow.com for more information. I'm Sarah Christie, and the goal of this podcast is to get us talking about climate change. So let's chat.